Oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ron and this is Blue Dot Enduro. So what I'm doing today is putting a nitro moose on the front. So I've never put a moose on, so this will be the first time for me. Here's the, the insert for this. If you're doing a fatty, which is a 9121, you want this part number. Um, nitro moose 21235. This is the standard. Uh, stiffness which gives you like 10 psi feel they also make a soft go with the standard if you're using a fatty because you could roll over on a soft one when you're doing tubeless you put the rim inside the tire car carcass and then you put the bead on opposite sides with the nitro moose you basically put both beads over one side of the rim so that's what we'll be doing the first step of the moose install i got the old tire and tube off left the rim lock on you're gonna reuse that uh, this golden tire fatty is directional so the side that has their logo on it i have one of the originals um, that goes on the brake disc side it rotates forward that way um, so basically you take your Moose lube, and <laughs> that reminds me of uh, there's a beer called Moose Drool. It's made by a Big Sky Brewing Company in Montana. I'm gonna call it Moose Drool, but it's Moose Lube. And if you're into beer, there's somebody came up with a homebrew <laughs> kit. If you're into homebrew, they tried to clone it. I think it's a brown ale or a porter, I'm not sure. Um, and they called it uh, caribou fill in the blank. I think it's actually caribou slobber. <laughs> anyway, my understanding on the lube isn't just for the install. It's primarily to keep it um, prolonged longevity when there's heat in your tire with the friction, blah, blah, blah. So you're supposed to use the entire tube. blue tone. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. You're supposed to rub it everywhere. So when you've got a golden tire fatty you almost need two tubes of this caribou cum because it like took off almost the whole freaking tube just to fill the inside of the carcass of the tire. So let's do whatever I've got left here to get on to the moose itself. It's less than half of it, but it'll have to do. The next step is to compress this end of the tire. This isn't all that hard. Here I'm directionally, uh, the golden tire needs to be facing up. Looking for the rim lock, here's the rim lock. And we're going to put both beads on from this side down. <clears throat> so you start by, you got to catch that rim lock on the bottom, the bottom bead. So that's one of the tricks. Here's where I'm right reaching the limits of my stand here. I really need to put pressure on it, so I'm standing on the handle. Try to get over where I need to be. So yeah, look at this thing. bottom bead on. Now we got to slide that. Yeah, this is NM21235. Boy, oh boy, look at how much it has to be stretched. Not quite sure what the trick is yet. Well, so far step two is the hardest step. 
for me, or step three, getting the moose inside the carcass. Well, I guess you need to push down. Okay, push it in and then push down as you push in. Let's see, it's going to want to pop out. So I need a spoon over here. Jeez, this might be the hardest part right here is to get it in the carcass of your tire because it really wants to it needs to be stretched and as you work it around it wants to come out on the opposite side and I almost had it and then I wanted to pop that out the key is to have the right angle with your knee so you can keep it in as you come around to the last part like this. Keep pressure on the outside of that tire. Come on. And I've got this one iron right here. There. Oh, all right. That has have to be the hardest part, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting putting the last bead on to be the hardest, but this thing held up, but it was flexing pretty bad. So after manhandling that moose around, this post I noticed was getting loose. I was worried that it was breaking through the plastic and it turns out just the nut on top loosened up. So I just need to tighten that down. I didn't put thread lock on the top because I want to be able to take this all the way out if I wanted to use the, the can again. Temporarily compress the rim lock with my angle iron against, against the garbage can. That gets a lot in there. So now I'm just going to spoon here first. Hopefully I can get her to stay right there. I can see the rim lock, <laughs> so I don't know if it's gonna stay or not. Get that down in there now. What you want to do is get a bead buddy on both sides of the rim lock, which is kind of hard to do right now since barely even have the bead on. Uh, almost there. Get this one on. There's one. Yeah, there's the bead. I can see it. I'll put the other bead lock right here. This don't make you sweat. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, and this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, with a moose. Honestly, it isn't that horrible so far. It was pretty sketchy there for a bit. Okay. Be buddy down. Come on. I think I'm good on the rim lock. That just popped in, which is really cool. You hear that? Yeah, so the hardest part, well, there it is. It's trying to pop out right here. The hardest part is keeping it in the rim, getting it in the rim and keeping it in there, like that. Come on, just need like a few more bites. Good, I think. There we go. Amy's. 
clumsy. are going to get tough. Okay. What I find best at this point is to use the spoon to just hold each little bite and move over a few inches when it gets really tight like this. This angled iron is so much more effective. There we go. Woo! My first moose. Urgh. These things are wedged in there, but I did it. Spooning the second bead on, really it's not that bad. Uh, you just gotta make sure you're holding down that rim lock when you get that in there and then just go around and it, it takes pressure, more pressure than a normal tire. But um, the bead hasn't popped in this one spot on this one side right here where it says golden tire, so. Okay, so the struggle is over. I use my trusty Yamaha uh, tire mount lube right on that edge with a couple cinch straps on the both sides and and the, the ridge has popped out now. So what I just did is put some black silicone sealer on the old, the cover for the old uh, valve stem. Ooh, she's all done. The nitro loose. That little piece of tape on there because I'm waiting for the silicone. Silicone in that hole with the cap on it to dry. I had the same tire on my Yamaha with, I'd run it with 10 PSI, 10 or 12, and a um, tubeless, so it feels very similar. It's still got that real squishy feel. And I dropped my pressure on my rear down to eight for now. That's all for now, Blue Don Enduro. Over and out.